Hey everyone. So one of the most common critiques that I've got for the few years that I'm doing this YouTube channel and sharing my martial arts journey publicly from going from Aikido to MMA, it actually comes more from the earlier days of the channel when I was still primarily doing Aikido. Yet because the old videos are still there, some people just watch a single video and they don't follow up on what's happening now and they come to these conclusions and I still get that same criticism again and again and it's something that I wanted to address for a long time and I finally decided, you know what, I will sit down and talk to you about it. So that criticism uh, pretty much goes by it's the practitioner's fault, it's not the martial arts fault. And that was told to me or written to me in comments so many times. Now when I was just doing Aikido, I already saw some flaws behind this logic, mainly because I was doing just Aikido and you know, I always like to have the benefit, to give the benefit of doubt and to question myself. But now that the years passed, I can clearly see the flaw behind this argument which I really want to break down together with you in this video. That criticism mainly was brought up in two different videos. One is the famous Aikido versus MMA where after doing Aikido for more than a decade being a professional instructor having been a living student and training it you know full time with highest level instructors I stepped into the ring to spar with an MMA practitioner and he completely destroyed me. I I could do zero stuff against him in terms of Aikido and just in general I could not do anything to him and so that's the video where that idea that it's the practitioner's fault not the martial arts fault was brought up many times and another video is called martial arts don't work and before you say that I realize you know it is a provocative uh, title but that's you know YouTube is my job and you sometimes have to come up with titles which are intriguing or controversial but the idea behind it is legit and what I wanted to say by that title is I shared it through stories when I was actually attacked in the street and there were I, I was in actual self-defense situations I froze and I couldn't do anything the, the Aikido techniques just all went blank I, I did not know how to respond and that's again a video where a lot of people said it's your fault it's not the martial arts fault and another argument to go along with that uh, those same guys would tell me that you know that I'm not a fighter I don't have the fighter spirit you know I don't have the guts and I'm just not made to do that and the martial art doesn't matter but it was my fault that I froze as an individual and that I don't have again the fighter spirit and that's the main reason why I did not respond and froze the fighter spirit also came up in the Aikido versus MMA video because if you look back at that video I flinched a lot I was I had no clue what to do I, I did not know what's happening so so with every punch I would squint my eyes turn away my face extend the hand and I was just flinching all over the place. Now, now actually to start from there, what frustrated me back in the day, uh, some of the guys would say that if you're flinching from the beginning, that means again, you don't have the fighter's spirit, you're not you know, a fighter, you don't have the heart, and then you're screwed, you're done for your whole life. I even saw one famous MMA coach saying the same thing, that if you flinch in the beginning, that means you're just not made for fighting and you're screwed. And back in the day, I could see, I could feel in my guts that this is not true this is not real that this is not some inherent flaw in a human being that is not fixable but I could not prove it yet at that day but now as we turn the pages forward to the present day not only that I'm not flinching anymore which is evident in my f in the video that is out there of my first uh, amateur MMA fight I pretty much don't flinch there whatsoever uh, but also in terms of that you don't have the fighter spirit you know right now I live in Dublin I train at as Ireland which is one of the most famous MMA gyms in the world and has like dozens of highest level professional fighters that I actually train together with in the pro team and I'm not saying you know that I pose a huge challenge to them or or that I'm as good as them that is not yet the state by any means but I am going head-to-head -head with those guys I'm sparring with those guys I'm grappling with those guys and trust me it's not pleasurable it's not easy it's super challenging it's quite intimidating 
to, to, to train with such high level guys, but I'm doing that every day. I'm doing that daily already for a month and I'm not backing away. I'm not flinching. I'm taking those punches. I'm not giving up. All of that shows that the idea that a person does not either has or does not have a fighting spirit. And, and back when I was doing Aikido that I did not have the fighting spirit and some people dubbed me as broken and not suitable for that. They were wrong. They were clearly wrong. I didn't change as an individual in the core essence. My values are the same. I'm, I'm the same individual as I was before. And of course, maybe I gained some more confidence through MMA or, or, or some other traits. But again, the core essence of me as an individual stayed. So it's not like I became a different person. I am the same person, but when I was training Aikido, that did not develop in me that, that ability to, to face legit fighters. And again, that is a fact. It is not the practitioner's fault. It is 80%, I'd say, the martial arts fault because uh, the way it's structured, the way it's trained, it's pretty much like the, that saying that the people you hang out with, that's more or less how you will become. But the same is with a martial art. The, the practice you do, you will naturally draw the attributes which it develops both, both positive and negative. And specifically in Aikido, but also not excluding other some other traditional martial arts uh, which are cooperative and don't have live pressure drilling or, or AKA sparring. When you train in a cooperative environment all the time, your partners are helping you and, and there's no real pressure, uh, there's no real danger, honestly. I mean, you could say like, oh, if you resist, I will break your arm, but that's not, you know, that's not a real danger. The real danger is when you know the guy may punch you in the face anytime. The, the guy can choke you out at any time. The guy can start breaking your arm and you're gonna have to tap. When you are in those conditions, you naturally start to get used to that. And, and initially it is, it may be very challenging, but with time, again, it becomes natural. You get used to it. And by the, by the time you're faced with, the, with similar circumstances, even like a self-defense situation, trust me, it, it's, it's a whole different picture. Yet again, if we revert back to Aikido, where all the training is cooperative, that does not expose you to that intensity, that does not expose you to that pressure. And once that pressure and intensity hits, you just don't know what to do. And that's what happened to me uh, in, uh, with the stories I told in the martial arts don't work video. When I had an actual physical altercation, my mind went blank because I didn't know how to respond to people who are not co cooperating. I didn't know how to respond to do and, and how to handle with that stress that came and that sense of danger, that, that level of threat. All of that was foreign because none of that was facilitated in the Aikido dojo or environment. But again, those assholes who were saying that it's the practitioner's fault, you know, the thing is, it's just such an easy scapegoat. It is just so easy to blame it on an individual rather than to look at the martial art you identify yourself with and to question that, to question your own legitimacy. Again, the, the easy scapegoat is to say, oh look, your Aikido didn't work in the Aikido versus MMA ring, not my Aikido. My Aikido would work but the thing is these guys I challenged them there's a specific video where I said guys I'm tired of you if you really think your Aikido would work against a professional fighter send me a video none nobody sent me a video at best if there was some something sent or somebody would send the link to some video it was either very poor Brazilian Jiu Jitsu very poor Judo or very poor boxing but no no Aikido and, and yeah, just, or, or nothing. The, 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 nobody lived up to the challenge, which means they're full of bull crap. They're not capable of, to, of doing what they say. Their Aikido doesn't work better. It works better only in one place, and that is their head. Those people who say that their style would work versus that my style or, or me as an Aikido practitioner, I did not succeed in the MMA ring because back in the day, I was flawed as an Aikido practitioner. That is false. I mean, first of all, look, and break down the facts. Again, I was training for more than a decade, three years as a living student. I traveled, I traveled the world. I, I trained at different locations with some of the most famous instructors. I devoted my whole life and essence to it. And, and I wasn't training just one style. I trained, I trained a bunch of styles. I ran my professional dojo. I, I did everything. And I failed miserably in the Aikido versus MMA sparring, at least on the technical level. So to push all of that aside and to say that, no, I just trained for a decade in a wrong way, that's already silly. But even if somebody else believes they would have done better, I, I give you a 100% guarantee. Those are the people who 
never actually sparred. They never actually tried their Aikido against a legitimate fighter. And it's, it's just a belief they have that it would work. I know how that feels. Years and years ago, in the beginning of my Aikido career, I thought that too. I imagined myself, if I would just get into a fight with, with a fighter, I imagined what I would do and how it would work. But then I would go to the elaborate excuses, which most Aikido and traditional martial arts guys do. It's like, oh, it's not honorable to fight in a ring. It's not honorable to spar. Or, or the infamous, it's too deadly. Screw that, it's not too deadly. I mean, look at this, it's, it's easy to break it down. If you take a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy or an MMA guy, these guys could literally kill you in seconds if they would choose to. That is a fact. I know that by myself, even already myself, I could kill a guy if I would really need to. I mean, I know how to choke someone out. Hold the choke for more than 30 seconds, he's dead. I mean, punch someone, uh, hit someone in the chin, knock out their consciousness, ground and pound, they're dead. I mean, it's 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 doable. But those guys who trained 10 times longer than me, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belts, professional MMA fighters, I, I tell you not, I tell you as a fact, they could kill you if they would choose to do that, and you could pretty much do nothing about that. But them being capable killers, they spar the highest intensity, they they grapple at the highest intensity, full pressure on, trying to do f maximal maximum damage, and they do not kill each other. They train all the time without significantly hurting each other. I mean, injuries happen, but they're not deadly, which shows that if you are actually able to kill someone, that doesn't mean you wouldn't be able to spar. So all of that nonsense that my martial art is too deadly, that is just pure nonsense. And I guarantee to you that those secret martial artists and their secret basement dojos with a couple of fat guys training together, they never actually sparred, they never actually grappled. It's all in their head, the belief that they could actually kill someone or that, that they're too deadly to spar. That is absolute nonsense. Get that idea out of your way. If you think that, question yourself, check yourself, you're in a bad direction. And the very last thing I want to break down here uh, that I mentioned is, is the fact that I froze in, in the self-defense situation uh, back when I was just doing Aikido. Again, a lot of people said, oh, you, you're just, you know, it, you're, 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 you're faulty as a person, you're broken as a person, you just don't have the fighter spirit, you don't have the guts, and that's why you froze. That is not true. Ever since I started training MMA, I did not get into a self-defense situation, but uh, obviously sometimes you see threats and you see and you feel how you respond there's a whole video I made about that it's called I'm not afraid of being attacked anymore but to, to quickly give you a summary uh, in the past when I was training just Aikido when I would feel a threat a person who might attack me I would freak out I would realize deep inside that I do not know what to do that I would not know where to start because I was not exposed to that realistic type of pressure before yet training MMA I mean I'm training with fighters who know how to fight at a very high level. And if I can start to deal with them, how much of a threat is a person in the streets, a person who has never fought or, or thought very little? Of course, that doesn't mean there's no unpredictability, that you should relax and that you're unbeatable. But at the same time, if you can handle a professional fighter, most likely the, a regular person will not cause you a big threat uh, on the same level, or it will not threaten you as much. I mean, you've been punched in the face hundreds of times. You you, you've been in the clinch, you've been on the ground. There's not that much that the person can surprise you about mentally. And so so now having trained MMA, I have that confidence. If I feel, if I see a person who may pose a threat, I know what I, I could do, you know, I know how to grapple, I know how to take him down, I know how to choke him out, I know how to punch, I know what it feels to get punched. There's, that fear has dr decreased dramatically. And, and I have a sense of what I would do. I can guarantee you if now I would be attacked by someone, you know, I would hold my composure and I would not freak out. I would not freeze because I have a sense of what I'm capable of, of what they could do and what I can do. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't invest into, you know, the whole uh, subject of self-defense. Yes, MMA and self-defense are different, but in terms of the psychological sense of how you feel in terms of, uh, in terms of a threat, when I was doing Aikido, the way Aikido is taught, the way Aikido is set up, the way the whole environment and everything, it does not prepare you for that. And it was not my individual fault 
that I froze, it was just a natural consequence of the training environment. I switched to MMA and that became solved. So the main message which I really want to come across through this video is that if you are that person who people are picking on and saying, oh, it's your fault that you're not picking up this martial art, it's your fault that you're afraid or, or, or any type of that nonsense, it is not. It probably just means you're training in the wrong environment, with the wrong people, with the wrong coach, or you haven't done that long enough. And lo by long enough, I mean, okay, six months, a year at most. I trained Aikido for a decade and that fear was always in me of being attacked. That knowledge that I will freeze, that flinching effect, it was all there and not because I was broken, but that, but because I had no chance to get comfortable with that in that type of training. Yet as soon as I turned to MMA, as soon as I turned to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, as soon as I found the right people to train with, the right methodology, the right coach, that all fixed up very quickly. I mean, I'm doing MMA for only about a year and the changes has, have been so dramatic. So again, it is not you. You are not broken, you are fixable. And of course, don't, don't become arrogant. Always question yourself. I question myself all the time. I question the practice all the time that I do. I question everything to a same degree. So make sure you do that too, but never put the blame just on you. If somebody is putting the blame just on you, saying you're a bad student, you don't have the fighter spirit or whatever, it's just an easy scapegoat to not take responsibility and to not search for the real solution, which obviously someone or something is not offering to you. So I can't stress this enough. You are not broken. There's always a solution. You just need to find the right path, the one which works. And don't get stuck with ideas of, oh, if I do this for 10 years, then it will work. If it doesn't give you results in the first few months, in the first six months or a year, change what you're doing. There's always a better way. So I hope this story brings across some of the messages I wanted to share. If you have any questions, make sure to ask in the comments. If this is the first video you're watching, subscribe to know, you know what else I'll discover. Uh, but all in all, thank you for watching as always. Check out the other videos, there's plenty of them. And until the next video, I wish you to own your journey.